ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وان تعدوا نعمه الله لا تحصوها ان الانسان لظلوم كفار وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحه والفراغ صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين <coughs> respected brothers and sisters this week's uh, lecture is a continuation from the hadith we mentioned last week where rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ni'matan maghbun fihi ma kathir min an-nas as-sihhat wal faragh he says that there are two blessings which many people take it uh, or they're cheated of this blessing meaning they take it for granted um and those two blessings are good health and free time so we spoke about free time last week uh, and we spoke about what we should do with the additional time that we have nowadays especially and inshallah today we'll speak about the blessing of health inshallah before i move on to the lecture um i wanted to clarify one matter um that this uh this is only a lecture which i give on the day of juma right this doesn't replace the juma khutbah in any way right all those who listen to my juma khutbah on a weekly basis before this quarantine right uh, they know that we do english lecture first then we pray sunnah and then we give adhan and then the khutbah the arabic khutbah happens and then the salah of juma the arabic khutbah uh, is actually a substitute for the two rak'at of dhuhr salah right so if you are praying juma at home with uh, the necessary requirements such as four uh, male adults um then uh, and you do the arabic khutbah uh, if you have all of these requirements then you should pray uh you should recite the arabic khutbah after this lecture and then um uh then you can listen and then you can pray your juma but again this lecture does not have uh, any significant rather it doesn't have any uh, uh any impact on the validity of the juma or not so you can li- listen to this lecture any time um this does not impact the juma salah so just wanted to clarify uh for anyone who had any misunderstandings inshallah going back to the topic uh the blessing of health there's an incident regarding uh Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu uh once he climbed the mimbar uh and of course he was the best friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so when he stood there he started to cry he was remembering uh, an incident uh, which happened in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he addressed the people saying that you know uh, one day in the in the initial stages uh, in the first year that we came here to Medina you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also ascended the pulpit and he also started to cry right and after he began to cry then he gave some valuable advices to the sahaba that were present he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam wal afiyah fa inna ahadan lam yu'ta ah- lam yu'ta ba'da al yaqin khayran min al afiyah he said that o oh, o oh, oh, sahaba o oh, people everyone ask allah ta'ala for afwa and afiyah right ask allah for afwa and afiyah And then he says that for verily there's nothing there's no bigger blessing after the blessing of faith than the blessing of afia so what does we'll explain the hadith firstly why did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cry the scholars they explain that he cried inna ma baka li annahu alima wuqu'a ummati fil fitna fil fitni wa ghalabat al shahwati wal hirs ala jam' al mal wa tahsil al jah he says that the scholars they mentioned that he he was crying because he understood and he knew right maybe he was informed by allah taala that the ummah will be plagued with different different trials and tribulations right and also they will undergo a, a, a huge amount of or they would have to overcome the 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 the, the shahwat the different desires that they would be you know overcome with uh, along with that he knew that the ummah will be uh unfortunately very greedy over wealth right uh, about gathering and amassing wealth right which we of course we see nowadays right this is the prophetic 
uh, advice and the prophetic uh, wisdom of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And along with that, he envisioned the people they would uh, compete with one another to attain fame. Right? And so, because of all of these reasons, because of him foreseeing all of this happening in the ummah, he began to cry. Right? So. Then Rasulullah commanded the people to ask Allah Ta'ala for afu and afiyah. Now what is afu? What is afiyah? Right? We hear afiyah and we hear afu uh, pretty often. So what are these terms? Uh, afu means to ask Allah Ta'ala uh, to remove the sins and to cover and conceal the sins. Right? Not only uh, forgive the sins but also to conceal the sins which is a, a great blessing. Right? Allah Ta'ala uh, is so merciful that he forgives us and also he doesn't expose us. Although you and I, you know, if Allah Ta'ala were to expose us, we would not be able to walk around in public because of how uh, wretched we are, you know. So Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala has covered our sins and Allah Ta'ala continues to forgive our sins as well. So we always ask Allah Ta'ala for Afu. Afu again means to uh, forgive the sins and to conceal the sins. Then is afia. Now there are many different definitions of afia, but the best definition, uh, the most inclusive definition, is uh, that as-salama fi din min al-fitan, that Allah Taala saves us in, uh, from all sorts sorts of trials and tribulations in our in our faith, and wa fil badani min sayil asqam wa shiddat al-mihna. And in regards to our uh, bodies, our physical selves. Uh, Allah Ta'ala saves us from all sorts of uh, problems uh, and difficulties and the worst and most uh, uh, horrible uh, sicknesses and diseases. Right? So this is the best definition of afia, where it includes, you know, uh, a person's, uh, where it includes asking, some, uh, asking Allah Ta'ala to save a person from uh, trials in regards to their deen. At the same time, it's, uh, it helps and makes uh, dua to Allah Ta'ala to save oneself from any trials and tribulations regarding their own uh, physical selves as well. So we should always uh, be habitual in reciting and asking Allah Ta'ala for uh, afu and afia. There are many, many du'as that we can memorize for this, right? And uh, there are a few actually. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wa al-afiyata fi dunya wa al-akhira. These are, uh, some of these du'as have been recorded in the, in the du'a sheet, uh, the du'a pamphlet that I prepared uh, and I've sent out on the broadcast list. If you haven't received it, um, you can just message me inshallah and I'll send it uh, over to you inshallah. But they have, uh, there's a few du'as there that we should recite in the morning and the evening. Uh, specifically, some of them have to do with asking Allah Ta'ala for af- afwa and afia in this dunya and in the in the akhirah as well. So again, habitually, we should try to build that habit in, our, in, in ourselves to ask Allah uh, for afwa and afia on a daily basis. Uh, the moment we wake up, Amongst the first things that, that we do on a daily basis should be to ask Allah Ta'ala for afu and afia. For every moment that we're given is, a, is truly a blessing. And before, you know, we would understand this. Before, we, or rather, before we, would, uh, we were told that, listen, health is a blessing and, you know, uh, it can be taken away at any time. Now, subhanAllah, we're coming to the realization that it's truly a blessing and definitely Allah Ta'ala can take it away at any given moment. So we should always continuously ask Allah Ta'ala for afwa and afia um, as much as possible, but specifically in the morning and the evening as well. We also just passed uh, the 15th of Sha'ban just a day or two ago. Um, and, and the 15th of Sha'ban is also known as Laylatul Bara'ah, right? The night uh, preceding the 15th day, right? It's known as Laylatul Bara'ah. Uh, or uh, some of us we know as Shabi Barat, right? So this is um, actually on that night, Allah Ta'ala informs the angels of their responsibilities throughout the rest of the, the following year, right? So the angels, they're told that this is what's going to happen. This is uh, how much rizq a person will be given. And this is uh, this person will die at this time. And this person, oh, Allah Ta'ala informs the angels of everything that will happen, right? Or of their responsibilities. Right? And subhanAllah, you know, how many people, they were alive last uh, last 15th of Sha'ban, last year, Laylatul Bara'ah, and they were completely unaware that they will pass away um, in this upcoming year, and this year, uh, and they weren't able to witness this 15th of Sha'ban. So we always pray to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala uh, grants us health, but not, and Allah Ta'ala grants us uh, afia, and Allah Ta'ala uh, gives us long lives filled with khair and afia. Ameen. Now, <clears throat> Ibn Abbas, uh, rather Abdullah, uh, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, عنه, he mentions an incident 
uh, where Rasulullah sallallahu he approached him and he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, alimni shayyan asaluhullah azza wa He says, Ya Rasulullah, uh, please teach me something that I can always consistently ask Allah Ta'ala for. So Rasulullah sallallahu told him, Salillah al-afiyah, ask Allah Ta'ala for afiyah. Right. And so Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, who was the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu he, he stays and he awaits a few days and he goes back. Of course, the Sahaba, they were very eager to acquire knowledge. And so they would continuously be thirsty for knowledge and to uh, approach the Rasulullah sallallahu and how they can benefit continuously. So he went back after a few days and he asked Rasulullah sallallahu again, Ya Rasulullah, alimni shay'an as'alullah, as'aluhu, as'alullah azza wa jal. Right. So then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says, Ya Abbas, Ya Amma Rasulillah, salillah uh, al-afiyah fi dunya wal akhirah And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa addresses Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, he says, O oh Abbas, O oh uncle of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa meaning he's speaking to him uh, as he is the uncle right, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, O oh uncle of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ask Allah ta'ala for afiyah in this dunya and the akhirah. Again, there's nothing, there's no greater blessing than the blessing of afia. So always ask Allah Ta'ala for afu and afia. Um, uh, you know, again, we mentioned in the early mornings, uh, in the evenings, whenever possible, whenever you have some opportunity, some time, ask Allah Ta'ala uh, for afia. SubhanAllah, I mean, health is just uh, a blessing which, again, we're taking it, uh, we, used to, we used to take it for granted. And now, I mean, Alhamdulillah, we're coming to a realization that this can be taken away. Uh, and subhanAllah, we see, I mean, I'm, on a daily basis, we're receiving messages that, you know, friends and families, they've fallen sick. And unfortunately, some friends and families are also passing away. We always pray that Allah Ta'ala grants Jannatul Firdaus and Allah Ta'ala forgives those who passed away. And Allah Ta'ala grants Shifa wa Ta'afiyah to all those who are sick. I mean, Right, so uh, the health that we have, use it. I mean, value it. First of all, value it and use it in the correct manner. Right? Use the health that Allah Ta'ala bless you with to build the relationship with Allah Ta'ala. Right? Uh, build it before you, know, before you go to meet Allah Ta'ala. Use the health that Allah Ta'ala blessed you with to assist those who don't have, those who don't have uh, these blessings that you have. Right? Ask Allah Ta'ala uh, for forgiveness from those who you've wronged. Right? Uh, or ask Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness uh, and, and then go and ask those who you've wronged as well ask them for forgiveness while you still have the chance while you have the opportunity uh, uh, again value this health and, and use it wisely and I don't want to make this uh, you know this lecture uh, all you know gloom and doom but what we need to realize is that this blessings these blessings that Allah Ta'ala has given us we need to use them for the betterment of our faith, right? Allah Ta'ala said, and the ayah I mentioned, Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Allah Ta'ala says that if you were to count, if you were to even try, if you were to even try to uh, enumerate the blessing of Allah Ta'ala, right? if you were even to try to understand one blessing of Allah Ta'ala, you would never be able to do so. لا تحصوها. You wouldn't be able to do so, right? إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Allah Ta'ala says that the insan, human beings, as a society, as a whole, unfortunately, you and I, we are very oppressive, meaning to our own selves. We are very oppressive to our own selves and we are very ungrateful. Allah Ta'ala gives us these blessings and we think that it happened to us by our own uh, strength or by our own desire or by our own you know, choices. Right? Again, anything can happen at any time. So you and I, while we still have the blessing of health, we need to value it and we need to use it to the best uh, capacity and the best way uh, possible. Moving forward, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is these du'as that Rasulullah has, has, has told us about, these are all encompassing du'as, right? Allah Ta'ala uh, told the Prophet and he, of course, he taught us, he taught the Ummah to learn these du'as and to habitually recite them uh, and, and, and teach others as well, right? So teach your, teach your children, teach your family members, teach your friends, and, and uh, you know, um, spread these messages. Uh, tell them about the blessing of, uh, of Afiyah and tell them to continuously ask Allah Ta'ala for Afiyah. I mean, uh, SubhanAllah, even before this entire, you know, virus, uh, you know, happened, um, there were so many people, you know, especially in the recent past that had, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, didn't have the blessing 
uh, of health as we have. Right? I mean, Subhanallah. Uh, I mentioned. I remember uh, a few a few weeks ago, or rather, now it's a, a few months. Um, uh, one scholar came from Texas, and he had addressed the community, and he had told us that uh, you know uh, last year or so he had been diagnosed with some eczema type of thing, and because of that sickness. Um, he was unable to do anything, meaning he wasn't able to sleep, he wasn't able to, uh, he, he couldn't do anything, right? The doctors, they told him that he was uh, allergic to dairy, he was allergic to gluten and all of this. So can you imagine that a person uh, was allergic to nearly all types of food, so he wouldn't be able to eat, he wouldn't be able to sleep. The basics of, uh, of living, right? So his life was extremely difficult and Alhamdulillah Allah Ta'ala uh, granted him shifa and then we pray that Allah Ta'ala continues to grant him shifa wa ta'afi ameen. But this is uh, a reality. Many of us, we have different, different problems and sicknesses uh, that if Allah Ta'ala, if Allah Ta'ala wants, Allah Ta'ala can test us uh, with the extreme, uh, with the, you know, the most difficult of sicknesses. And there's nothing that we not, you and I, we can do. Again, the virus, no one can see it. And there's nothing that anyone can do. Uh, you know, and of course, uh, you know, up until now, the, the cure has not been found yet. But of course, inshallah, as Muslims, we believe that that there is a cure for every single sickness. So inshallah, we will find the cure. But understand, I mean, the blessing that we have, we need to use this blessing. We need to uh, avail of this op these opportunities that we have where we can still worship Allah Ta'ala, where we can still uh, do, go do good activities, you know, before Allah Ta'ala tests us with such uh, difficulties and trials where we cannot sustain and where we cannot, uh, unfortunately, keep up. Uh, another youth in our community. I remember uh, just a couple of, uh, if I recall correctly, at the beginning of this year. So either, I believe in January. Right, he had spoken to me after one of the Jumas. He came to me, he spoke to me. Uh, he's 17 years old, right? He spoke to me after Juma Salah. Right? We had a discussion. Uh, I met his father and he was asking for some advices. Uh, and then that day they went, they went home. Um, a few days later, I find out that that same day, uh, that youth, he fell off of a, a parking garage and he broke almost all of the bones of his body. And he was unable to walk, he was unable to eat, and he was unable to do anything. And so I visited him and I asked him, I mean, wh what would you like to do? I mean, if you, you know, once you, you know, once you heal and Alhamdulillah, he's on his track to recovery and Alhamdulillah, he's much better now. But um, I asked him at that time, you know, what would you do? Uh, or what will you do when you get better? He says that I will drink water. He says, I haven't drunk water in so long. He couldn't even drink water. The basics of things. The things that we take for granted. Right? We take drinking water, every single, all of these things we take for granted. But he couldn't. And because of that, he was saying, uh, you know, I miss... Uh, if you were you and I, maybe you would say steak or cheeseburgers or something else. but Or biryani or whatever else, you know. But this person, he, you know, he couldn't even drink water. So that's what he was craving for, right? SubhanAllah, the things which we take for granted. Right? So... Again, these blessings of Allah Ta'ala, they, uh, they can be taken away any moment, right? Uh, so value these blessings and, and use these blessings to, uh, to benefit us in terms of this dunya and, of course, in terms of the akhirah as well. We will conclude on the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سِرْبِهِ مُعَافًا فِي جَسَدِهِ عِنْدَهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا حِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا He says that, Three things. He says that the person who wakes up, the, the person who gets up in the morning, Aminan fi sirbihi, he is safe and secure amongst his family in his house. Right? He's safe and secure amongst his family in his house. Secondly, Mu'afan fi jasadihi, he's he's healthy. He's healthy in terms of his body. Right? Number three, عندهم قوت يومه, he has the uh, enough food to last him one day. Again, he has enough food to last how long? One day. Right. Subhanallah, you and I, we have uh, food to last us for months. <clears throat> he says, the person who has these three blessings, dunya. It's as if the entire dunya has been prepared for him. Meaning he has everything he needs. He has everything that he needs. Right. So these, uh, I mean, subhanallah, majority of us, we have all of these three things. Alhamdulillah, we're, we're living uh, very safe, right? We have, alhamdulillah, health, right? And alhamdulillah, we have enough food to last us at least a day, right? So uh, we need to value these things and we need to take it for granted and be grateful that Allah Ta'ala has given us these blessings. Many, many, many people throughout the world, 
uh, even in the United States, many people do not have these three basic blessings, right, which we take for granted. Right? You and I, we need to value these simple, simple blessings right, and use them uh, to assist those who don't have these blessings. There are many uh, fundraisers and there are many you know, uh, organizations working to assist those people who are in a very difficult time. And Alhamdulillah, we are in Zakaria Islamic Academy. We're also trying to assist those who are going through a difficult time. So if you are uh, watching this video and you are going through a difficult time, however that may be, please reach out to us and inshallah, we will try to assist as much as possible. But there are many other organizations also trying to assist uh, those, whether it be nationwide or globally. So if we, uh, at the very least, uh, after Allah Ta'ala has blessed us, we should also try to bless and assist others as well, whoever we can, however we can try to assist others and try to um, try to live a selfless life. Right? Don't live a selfish life where you're only living for yourself or your family. Rather, try and assist all those people who are struggling, all those people who are going through much, much, much di more difficult times than we are. May Allah Ta'ala allow us to understand uh, and value the blessing of health May Allah Ta'ala allow us to use the health that we've been given uh, properly and may Allah Ta'ala uh, grant us all afwa and afia. Jazakumullah khayra. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiru wa kawna tubu ilayk.